Hi, I'm Brian Fury, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, protein synthesis, or transcription and translation. Now, proteins do pretty much everything in the body, so you'll need to know how to make them. That information is stored in DNA. Alright, let's take a look at that. DNA is double-stranded, and it's in a double helix, kind of like a twisted ladder. And it codes for proteins. It does this by a sequence of bases, four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. The arrangement of these four bases in DNA will code for virtually every protein in the human body. Now, adenine and guanine are the purines. Cysine and thymine are the pyrimidines. You'll need to know that for class. An easy way to remember that, 9 is a pure number. Adenine and guanine both end with 9, and they're both purines. Also, remember DNA has two strands. It'll have bases on both of them, and the bases themselves will bond to each other. And this is how they'll do it. Adenine always bonds with thymine, and guanine always bonds with cytosine. So let's take a look at them, say, in a strand. We usually represent the bases by their first letter. So thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. The complementary strand, A, T, G, C. Bonding is always A to T and G to C. OK, so that's DNA. But then how does it tell the cell to make proteins? Because it can't leave the nucleus. It uses something called RNA. It's very similar, but it's single-stranded instead of double-stranded. and the bases aren't all the same. It's got adenine, it's got guanine, it's got cytosine, no thymine. Instead it used something called uracil. We'll represent that with a capital U. It bonds just like thymine. Adenine bonds to it. Basically the same idea. So, protein synthesis occurs in two big steps. Transcription and translation. And in both of them we're going to see different kinds of RNA. In transcription we're going to form something called mRNA. The M stands for messenger. Messenger RNA. It sends the message from DNA. Here's how it works. DNA first will unzip, and then an enzyme called RNA polymerase attaches to what's called a promoter site on DNA. It just says, start here, protein. And it goes along, adding RNA bases as it goes. Finally, it will reach a termination sequence, and the RNA strand will be lifted off the DNA strand. But we're not done yet. See, the RNA strand that we've created has different types of parts. It's got introns, and it's got exons. The thing about this is that exons, we don't really, we want just the exons. We don't want the introns at all. And so what will happen is the introns will be cut off and the exons stuck back together. Still not done. Before it leaves the nucleus, we had to have caps on the end of RNA. Why? Because otherwise it will get digested by the cell. So we add protective caps to the end of mRNA, and then it leaves the nucleus. Transcription is done. On to translation. This occurs when the mRNA reaches the ribosome. Whenever you see a sequence of mRNA bases, it's usually written out in threes, like A, U, G. I tend to draw a line between them to distinguish. And then U, G, G, U, G, A, so on and so forth. Every three bases in mRNA is known as a codon. The reason this is so essentially important is because mRNA is read three bases at a time by something called tRNA. T stands for transfer in this case, transfer RNA. So this mRNA, very short strand I guess, reaches the ribosome. Along comes tRNA with the complementary sequence, UAC. And that will bring along an amino acid. Next one, ACC. That will bring an all, another amino acid, and they'll get bonded together, so on and so forth, until you get a protein, which is just a bunch of amino acids bonded together. Now, if you want to find out exactly which amino acid each of these codes for, check out your textbook. You can probably find an mRNA decoding chart there. If your teacher ever asks for it, check your textbook. Otherwise, your teacher will probably provide one. That's translation. All right, to recap. DNA is double-stranded, a double helix, and it codes for proteins through a sequence of its four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Adenine and guanine are the purines. Cytosine and thymine are the pyrimidines. To remember this, 9 is a pure number. Adenine and guanine both end with 9 and the purines. Now, in DNA, adenine always bonds with thymine, guanine always binds with cytosine. If you draw out two strands of DNA represented by their bases, you'll see that A is always with T, G is always with C, so on and so forth. DNA, however, cannot leave the nucleus, so it sends messenger RNA to code for proteins. This is formed when DNA unzips. Then, RNA polymerase bonds to the promoter site, 
and adds RNA bases until it reaches the termination sequence. Then the mRNA is lifted off the DNA. Introns are removed from the mRNA and it is capped so that it is not digested. Next, in translation, mRNA will have reached the ribosome. tRNA then comes along. Every three bases in mRNA is then read. And for every three bases, an extra amino acid is added to the growing chain that will eventually become a protein. Once the entire mRNA strand has been read, a protein will have been formed. All right, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.